Hello everyone, Jeff Brozovich here again from LongRangeOnly.com. We're going over some more components for our 30 nozzler build for our project rifle at LongRangeOnly.com. Like I've been talking about, this is a rifle we're going to pit right up against the old tried and true 300 Win Mag. Same length barrels, same bullets. I'm going to take them out in the field and see how they do. This build with the 30 nozzler is what I feel is going to be the ultimate build. So. We're talking about all the components, reviewing them one at a time, and as you just seen there coming in, I, uh, I'm checking out the Christensen Arm barrels. I was checking them for twist rate. So let's have a closer look at the barrels and a couple other components from Christensen that we're going to be using in this build. These are the carbon fiber gunsmith blanks you can buy from Christensen Arms. And a good thing to remember is all these components that we show and we're using for Christensen, from Christensen Arms, you can call up and order online right out of their catalog or call them up and tell Cade down there what you need and he'll take care of you. But anyway, what I ordered up here was uh, I ordered two carbon fiber wrap barrel blanks, um, one 200 shank, nine ten at the muzzle, uh, 28 inches long. Uh, they're a one in nine twist. I've checked them both and as you've seen right there, it's good to check things before you go ahead and put your rifle together. Um, it's both checked out right on uh, one, point, uh, one in nine twist. Okay, so the uh, way I was doing that, just to give you a little bit more about that, I just used a tight fitting uh, uh, barrel, uh, you know, bore brush and I extract it back out of the bore so I can measure back from my start line. I put a start line um, right at the shank of the barrel, an index line on top. Pull it out till you get one complete revolution. Stop there, measure from your line back to where you started at the shank, and that'll tell you your twist weight. One revolution, nine inches. So one and nine twist. So the barrels checked out great um, in twist rate. They're the right length, they're the right diameter, they're the contour I ordered. Uh, everything's good there. I weighed the barrels, they're wearing a, weighing about, uh, about 3.4 pounds. So fairly light carbon wrapped and uh, remember we get the rigidity we want from the carbon wrapping makes a very strong barrel not a huge contour but uh, we ain't adding that extra weight and we get the strength the other thing we need to note about the Christensen arm barrel blanks uh, and this differs from uh, most barrel blanks that I've gotten in the past uh, when you receive them you're gonna find that it's already crowned so after they do their lapping they crown it and they also thread it for a muzzle break it comes with a thread protector, but you can screw your muzzle brake right off. Here's the brake we're going to be using, the Christensen Arm Slayer brake with the adjustable top ports. And you can screw that right on there. Now, it's going to have to be indexed. This is a side discharge brake, so it'll need to be indexed. So you got a couple options of doing that. I have the luxury of having a lathe here, or the gunsmith that's going to build this rifle is going to do it. He's going to take fine cuts off the back of this until it indexes straight up. The other thing, when you buy a brake from Christensen Arms, you get this crush washer. Now this washer's got a little concave to it, and it'll, uh, and it'll give you a little variance there as you tighten up so you can index on top. If it's off a little bit, I just put them on the belt sander and thin them down a little bit and keep going until I get my brake indexed. But that's already done. You won't have to expend the expense of threading for your muzzle brake. And uh, if you don't want to run the brake, put the, self, uh, the thread protector on that comes with it, and you're good to go. Well, that kind of covers the Christensen Arms barrels we're going to be using. I ordered two blanks identical to each other. Uh, I did that because, hey, I'm always needing another barrel blank around. So uh, we've got them here. I'll have them and uh, have it on stock, you know, if I need one down the road. Um, some other components that we're going to talk about here, you know, I'll drop in some pictures of the muzzle brake here so you can kind of see how the Slayer brake goes. I've used this brake a lot. I'm very fond of it. You'll notice there's four ports in the top of this brake. You can remove these... Uh, these plugs and you can control your muzzle rise. Um, obviously your first port catches the most 
of your blast and it'll do the most work. So a lot of times I'll do like on a 30 caliber, I'll probably pull the first one and the third one or the first one and the fourth one to get just the right amount of control on my muzzle rise so I can stay on target. The next item we're gonna use from Christensen is I've got a couple different um, series of their, uh, of their bottom metal here. This is the hinge floor plate aluminum design bottom metal. It's really light, their latch works really good. This is a nice piece. Uh, so I really like that, and that's usually what I typically use. The other option I have here is their detachable bottom metal, um, or detachable magazine, I should say. Um, Christensen has done quite the job here with this, uh, keeping it light and keeping it long. Um, let me explain. Carbon fiber, carbon fiber uh, mag box, very light, real thin on everything here. It's got a nice latch for that. Um, when the mag box is in, it's up, it's not sticking down out of the bottom of the gun a lot, it's a single stack feed. But most importantly, what I like about this option is, um, they've done a great job here. I can load, I've got two rounds here, I've got a 300 wind mag and a 30 nozzler. These are the two rounds I'm going to be pitting against each other and see who's boss, okay? Both of these, with Berger 215 grain bullets loaded to the lands, specced out to my reamers, I can shove these in there, I still got room at the end of my mag box. So it's long enough to uh, do the job. 300 wind mags longer, right? Shove one of them in there. Still got room. Probably got about 60, 80 thousandths there on the end of that bullet. And that's seated to the lands. I like the way this thing loads. It's, it's easy to get the bullets in and out of it. It does a good job. We're switching back and forth, forth here with two different cases. They're all fitting good. And the mag box snaps in place. You know when you got it in there, it's in the right place. The other thing I want to talk about here on the uh, bottom metal and mag box options, uh, what I did was I, uh, I took these out and I weighed them both. I wanted to know what's my weight difference going with a detachable mag as opposed to the hinge floor plate design with a mag box spring and follower. I did weigh a mag box spring and follower along with this piece when I weighed these pieces. So the end result this system right here is only about two ounces heavier than this one. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to use yet, but I'll decide here. Uh, I'll probably go with the lighter one because that's what I'm always used to, but I just want to compliment Christensen Arms on what they've done here. It's light, almost as light as going with the, the hinge floor plate. It, it's, it's a well-fitting mag box. It's carbon fiber. It loads well. Uh, a good option, and again, you can buy these right from Christensen Arms. I think I'm down to one component review left on this rifle build before we send it all off to the smith to get it put together. And uh, that component is going to be, as I mentioned before, is the trigger. We're going to use the Trigger Tech trigger, and my next review is probably going to be on that trigger. I have one coming. It should be here any day. Um, I want to tell you a lot about Trigger Tech triggers and the one we've chosen for this build. So that'll be coming up next. So soon we'll be boxing these parts up in the next few days here. Everything's going out to North Carolina to Dan's Custom Gun Service, Dan Glover. I've, I've known Dan for years. He builds some fine rifles. So Dan's going to be the smith to put this all together. And uh, the other neat thing about this is as we're doing this, we've reviewed the components. When we get done, we're going to interview Dan, and uh, we're going to get his feedback on, Dan, how did the barrel machine? What did you think of the steel in the barrel? Uh, Dan, how did the action uh, measure up? Did, it, uh, you know, did you find everything true? How did it look? So we'll get some gunsmith input that we'll be able to share with you when we get this rifle all together on, on how each of the components looked to a machinist when he put his measuring tools all over them. So the 30 Nosler 300 Win Mag shootout's getting close. Uh, we're getting real close. Uh, this rifle's going right out there. Dan's going to get it together for us. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So I hope you guys are getting something out of these uh, product reviews as I do them here. Um, if you like what you're seeing and you want to make sure you don't miss anything on this build or the shootout, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and come on over to longrangeonly.com where there's a lot of guys talking about this kind of stuff every day and you can get on some good conversations there. And uh, we hope that you're enjoying all that. I really enjoy doing it for you. Jeff Brozovich from longrangeonly.com. I'll be seeing you soon.